I honestly debated on whether or not I should do a quick shake video for the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Mostly because I'm definitely going to be doing a full playthrough of the game, like I did with the Resident Evil Zero recently. However, I'm wanting to go through the Resident Evil series chronologically, meaning we've got quite a while to wait until it's Ari 4's turn. But seeing as I've sunk in so many hours into the remake so far, I do feel obligated to talk about this recreation of a classic. So, without further ado... Resident Evil 4, one of, if not the biggest games to come from developer Capcom. A game that redefined Resident Evil as a series, and set a benchmark that so many games after it took deep inspiration from. Gears of War, Dead Space, The Last of Us... I was there, Gandalf. I was there 18 years ago when this game first hit store shelves. I bought a GameCube for it, as well as the Sonic ports. I bought the figures that released around the time for it. I bought the ridiculous chainsaw controller for it. I mean, look at this thing! While Resident Evil 4 might not be my favorite entry into the series, it's most definitely up there. And when news broke about the game's remake coming out back in 2022, it is safe to say that I collectively lost my Shit, just lost it. Still haven't found it to this day. And when the game's release date was finally announced, I took paid time off my day job just so I could dive into this remake, a la Scrooge McDuck style. I wanted no distractions. This game was going to have my undivided focus until I could see that final result screen. I was so excited to see what this new iteration on 4 could bring to the table. And I'll go ahead and tell you all right now, this remake does not disappoint. Which is good, because everyone loved Resident Evil 4. Charlie's fucking bed-riddled grandpa loved Resident Evil 4. It was nothing short of a cultural phenomenon when it first released. So, naturally, when the remake was first announced, it had some pretty hefty boots to fill. And with the public remembering Capcom's most recent remake that was Resident Evil 3, were anxious. Hell, some were even downright protective, saying the game didn't need a remake. The original was perfect, a well-oiled machine, and modern gaming sensibilities could actually do more harm than good if it wasn't handled correctly. People were arming themselves like the Ganados outside of Capcom going, don't you fuck this up Capcom, don't you skimp out on us. But I am overwhelmingly happy to say that not only is the Resident Evil 4 remake a fantastic game, but it's also a very faithful remake, overflowing with replayability and charm just like the original. No thanks, bro. The game's controls feel like an evolution of the GameCube original, keeping the snappy gunplay and exciting melee prompts, while at the same time injecting new and thoughtful elements into the mix. The knife parry system, stealth kills, and more mobility in general has the game's combat feeling flashy, fun, and something I actually look forward to from the first enemy to the last. Initially when I saw the trailer that had the knife parries featured in it, I was honestly kind of worried. Like, it featured Leon blocking a chainsaw with his knife, which in the original game was such a fantastically imposing threat. And I was honestly sitting there going, oh jeez, if you can just block the chainsaw instant kills, that's gonna really take the fear of them away. But the way the knife durability function works, it never feels like you're indestructible. More like you have a panic second chance button, if you're quick enough. Where's everyone going? Bingo? The story of the game is mostly the same in broad strokes. Ashley gets kidnapped. The president sends you off to rescue her. Shady cult keeps doing shady cult shit but they actually did make quite a few changes under the hood. This time around, it felt like it, we really got to know the characters of Luis and Ashley a lot more than in the original. I mean, the original, they were they were fine, they were serviceable for the most part. I mean, Ashley was just this kind of high-pitched noise constantly in your ear that had you looking frantically around for the nearest dumpster in which you could, you know, deposit her. Help! Help me, Luis! 
for safety reasons. And Luis was... He was just really a one-note ladies man who made the funny ballistics comment. See that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. Ah, <laughs> uh, Capcom, you you really couldn't let us have that line again, could you? But this time around, Ashley feels like a real human being. She helps Leon where she can, and her banter with him feels so much more organic. I genuinely found myself actually liking Ashley so much more than in the original. And this whole Mouseley, the Mouse Ashley craze that's been going on over Twitter is like the cutest thing right now. Capcom, please, could you make like a Mouse Ashley charm or like a little hat in game? Or, you know, just go hard and make like a full model replacement for us? Uh, you know, civilized individuals? I'm just saying it's money on the table and the modding community's gonna do it anyway. And Luis, okay, at first I kinda thought they made him look a little. Seedy? Like if Irving and Excella from Five had this ugly, ugly love child. But then seeing him more in game, I really grew to like the guy. He had a lot more depth to him than his original design, and uh. Okay, slight spoilers here, so you know, if, if you don't want to hear, cover your ears. Okay? So his death at the hand of Krauser in the remake honestly felt a lot more devastating than when old Sadler just gave him this kind of, you know, stab with his throbbing tentacle. And him firing at Krauser while we're fending off attacks, him giving us the key to his lab, all of these changes from the original that kind of just made him a lot deeper and resonated with me a lot more. One teensy tiny little gripe I do have was that upon beating the game, there was no mercenaries mode waiting for us. No separate ways, no assignment ADA, just cold, sterile, and lockables. And boy, do they like tying the cool shit to some pretty tedious criterias. <laughs> In the original Resident Evil 4, the Chicago Typewriter, reappearing here as the Chicago Sweeper, was unlocked on completion of the Assignment Ada minigame. A small section of the island portion of the original game where you played as Ada, which ended with a boss fight against Krauser. Beating the full game gave you a reward of a new game mode, which in turn rewarded you with a cool weapon to unlock in the main game again. They did the same thing with the hand cannon, although it wasn't quite as simple as just beating mercenaries mode to unlock it. No, no. You originally had to complete all four stages of mercenaries mode with all five characters earning five stars for each of them. You really had to master this mode. And by doing so, you would unlock the hand cannon, which was a very satisfying weapon to attain and use in the game. Now, seeing as the game didn't initially release with these modes, I can understand they wanted to still have these iconic weapons in the game. But jeez, getting an S rank on Professional for the Sweeper is a hell of a hustle. And I admittedly like playing my Resident Evil games kind of slow and steady, searching out all the treasures, completing all the side missions. My first clear time of the game was actually pushing about 15 hours, and I was happy with that. But my next two runs were both at the five and a half hour kind of time frames respectively. And while I unlocked what I wanted, it did leave me just kind of feeling exhausted when all was said and done. Time to call some mayhem. Okay, so super quick update here. I'm gonna interject to my script for a moment to talk about mercenaries mode because uh, it's already released in some regions, not currently in mine, which is weird. New Zealand's normally one of the first places to get stuff, but it's fine. Um, I'm waiting to play it, and the information's come out that some of the characters and stages are actually missing. So, we've lost Waterworld, which was the only unique stage. So, we've still got a castle stage, it looks like. Still got a village stage. Still got an island stage, but losing waterways was kind of sad, because that was where Super Salvador was. But, hey, maybe they'll add to it some more. But the more painful news was that the characters have changed up. So we have Leon, of course. We have newcomer Luis as a mercenary's character, which is really cool. I mean, it makes sense to include him, right? But we've lost Ada. I 
don't know why. I mean, people have been saying that she may be in one of the future DLCs, but I mean, I really thought that she would be here for the release. Speaking of another loss, we have lost Wesker as a playable mercenary character. My favorite mercenary character, so kind of feeling a little bummed out about that. We do still have Hunk, though, which is cool. We still have Krauser, which is cool, but losing a stage and two characters feels very... I, I don't know, kind of lame, but I'll keep my breath held that maybe we'll see the other characters and stages show up in a later DLC. Hopefully we won't have to pay for him. So my final thoughts on Resident Evil 4's remake. Is it a faithful remake? Definitely. Probably the most faithful remake to date, actually. Does it replace the original? I would say no, but it isn't worse than the original game either. I'd rate them pretty much perfectly on par with one another, which is high praise if you're familiar with the source material. Should you buy it? Yes! This game has already eaten close to 50 hours of my life, and I can absolutely see myself beating the game a fourth time, and a fifth time, and a tenth time. Resident Evil 4 isn't the kind of game that you just put down after beating it and go, Woo! That's enough of that, you know, I'm off to play something else. It, it always has you going, oh man, I can't wait to blast my way through this again. Maybe this time I'll max out the TMP, or the Striker, or a different handgun. There's so many ways to experience it each run. It's a game that feels fun to master, and I'm sure once Mercenaries Mode and other DLC come out for it, it'll have even more fun reasons to enjoy it all over again. Just, uh, Capcom, if you're listening, Please don't make things like Assignment Ada or Separate Ways be paid for DLC. I know with Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8, you love selling us another short campaign to tack onto these newer entries. Hell, I guess you've technically been doing it since 5, right, with Lost and Nightmares. And I'm all for that. Hell, why not sell us Operation Javier? Seeing as you retconned basically the only game that featured it before, just please, I beg you, don't sell us extras that were already a part of the original experience. Also, while I've got you listening, uh, can I just talk about some other important remakes you need to get around to? Because out-